What's up guys? I'm doing a test of this uh, POV camera that I got. Um, I bought it mostly for work. Um, it's protection. Um, we've had a couple of customers recently at some commercial properties that blamed us for some damages to the property that we weren't even in that part of the building. Um, you know, we were fixing walk-in uh, walk ice machines and they're on the complete opposite end of the building where they said this damage occurred but because we were the last, you know, fix-it company in there, um, they said we did the damage, but we weren't even on that other side of the building. So I got this uh, camera as protection um, for myself because in the business world, you know, it comes down to uh, your customer's word versus, you know, my word as the technician. And in the business world, the customer's always right. So uh, some of the technicians within the company have been getting in a lot of trouble. Um, for no reason um, you know I was on that job with that guy helping him with that with that walk-in freezer and um, I mean we did nothing wrong we didn't even go to that other side of the building where they said this damage occurred so um, I've been wanting to invest in one of these for a while but it, it became even more pronounced uh, the day we got our ass chewed um, and we had no no proof and that was one of the things they asked us as well can you prove that you were not over there and unfortunately no uh, we're trying to get our job done. We weren't worried about you know taking pictures of where the fuck we were So now I'll be able to wear this thing on my head the whole time. We're on these calls um, I bought a really big memory card for it. I got a couple of extra batteries But also I think this little camera here will uh, transition over well to the fish tank when I'm doing some DIY stuff You know when I really wanted to get some of those shots when I was building this tank I really wish I was able to have both hands free so I could do a little bit more uh, you know, like when I was siliconing the joints and stuff on the tank, it would have been good to have both hands free, but I could still, you know, really get into the joint and show you guys how to get it done. Um, I was trying to do it one-handed, and that was a pain in the ass. So this will make for some good uh, videos for the um, for the aquarium side of things. I guess I can just show you a little update here. <clears throat> Oop, watch it, dog. Um, down here in the sump, we the refugium's doing really well. The the uh, Calerpa Mexicana really took off. Um, I forgot to put the uh, fuge light on a timer, so it ran for almost three weeks straight, just uh, all light. So um, there's a little bit of cyano built up on top of the Cato, <laughs> excuse me, on top of the Cato Morpha, but um, it's starting to go away slowly. I bought some uh, live rock rubble down here, and I put it in the sump for now. That's going to help me get that new 65-gallon tank going. I'm going to let it cycle for a couple weeks before I put any corals in it. But I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do a water change on this tank, and this is about a 40 gallon water change I do on this tank. So I'm gonna use all the water out of this tank from the water change, put it into the 65 gallon, and then use a little bit of water out of that 40 breeder <clears throat> to fill up the rest of that 65 gallon tank. And then put this rock in there inside the sump, or actually I'm gonna probably use that rock inside the tank, because that's not, um, that's not nasty rock. And then I got a bunch of dry rock that I need to, uh, uh, you know finish the scape with and then I'll put the fish the uh, the sailfin tang and the uh, coral beauty are gonna go on the sump for a while till I finish that tank up because I'm gonna really break that 40 breeder down uh, probably today actually um, just so I can get it sold I want to get it sold and it's kind of a uh, it's it's not doing so hot right this minute um, I forgot to uh, top it off and I did a huge top off on it one day and didn't do it slowly because I'm, I'm impatient as hell and uh, it killed off pretty much all the coral I had in there. I actually, the Akins that were in there, there's one of them there and then there's the other colony thing there. Um, I've had them in this tank now for about, <clears throat> I don't know, four or five days and uh, they're doing a lot better now but I almost lost them. And, uh, I know it was because of the salinity swing in there, man. I, I, I probably put about two, maybe three gallons in there, and, you know, in seconds, less than a minute. So, um, I stressed them out. But, um, yeah, so this is a pretty sweet little camera here. I'll show you guys here in the mirror. Yes, I'm covering up the camera lens because I got people staying here right now. So, this is what it is. It's a uh, Sony Action Cam. Um, AZ-1, um, really nice camera. Right now I'm kind of messing with the uh, video formatting of it all <clears throat> because I just did kind of the same video about an hour ago and uploaded it to my computer and um, <clears throat> it doesn't, uh, 
it, it, it records at such a high quality whatever whatever I don't know how that bullshit works but the video quality is so good my computer does not play it back well like it's real stuttered so I just changed the formatting on this little camera here to see how it does um, when I get that 65 gallon um, set up I'll give you a little sneak peek kind of deal on what that tanks gonna be all about um, this tank is kind of went the SPS dominated way and I do got you know the the toadstool in here and my euphelia garden over here do really well but with the flow that I run in this tank my Akins are getting kind of beat up and with the highlighting these Akins do not like this highlighting at all I had a call little colony at the very back of that egg crate <clears throat> I lost almost every single head on it <clears throat> and the only thing I could think to do was take it out of the flow and out of the light and I put it in the shade when that toadstool opens up it's humongous and it shades that whole area of the egg crate and then the uh, Akins on the outer edges there um, so in the shade the the ones in the shade and away from the high flow coming off the glass do absolutely amazing they all really big full heads the coloration come is coming back on that one um, and the polyps that were dying off are now full polyp heads again I'm able to feed it again because it's bringing its tentacles out again so um, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it but it's the one there <laughs> But um, so yeah, so that's what that tank is gonna be. It's gonna be pretty much a Aiken and Zoanthid dominated tank. And I'm pointing over here because I got one little colony of Zoanthids right there. Um, so yeah, it'll be an Aiken and Zoanthid uh, dominated tank. But of course, you know, I got some Euphelia down here on the sand bed. I'm gonna put in there. Um, you know, there's gonna be miscellaneous coral I'm gonna throw in there. But for the most part, it will be the Aikens and Zoas. So um, yeah, guys, and I uh, yes. Uh, I'm sure that question is going to come up. Are you going to post your videos from work? Yes. My biggest challenge right now is do I make another YouTube channel or do I just upload it to that? Ultimately, that's going to be up to me. I don't really want to manage another YouTube channel. Um, I think it's easier just to keep going on the one I have and post <clears throat> my work videos and also my aquarium videos all on the same channel. I don't really think anybody... I don't know why I would lose subscribers over posting work videos. My work is very interesting, and you'll see that in the in the first couple of videos that I upload. I mean, it's not boring. <laughs> so, uh, all right, guys, um, this is more of a test of this camera. So that's uh, I'll stop rambling later.